Hello, today we're going to talk about erosion and deposition by wind, ice, and gravity. So erosion by wind can happen um, mostly through what's known as abraded rock or through abrasion, which we've already talked about. Abrasion is basically just the breaking down through um, wind, water, or ice. But we know that abrasion in this regard is when the sand is being blown by the wind in something such as maybe a desert. And particles are gonna hit the side of rocks and basically wear them down. So in this picture right here, this is the wind blowing the little particles. You notice we have a solid rock. Over many, many years, we notice that those particles now have changed the way that rock looks and it now has what we would call a polished face. So basically anywhere that there's strong wind and loose sand, desert. Um, this happens frequently. So this is going to allow the surface to become smooth and polished over time. Again, this is going to occur over many, many years. In these deserts, we do have something called desert pavement. Um, and this basically includes a few things. It includes deflation. And deflation is when wind removes the top layer of sediment from the soil. If you have wind and you have loose things on the ground, we know that it blows away. Whether those loose things are tiny leaves, tiny little pieces of sand, even snow, even pollen, anything that's just sitting on top of the ground can blow when the wind moves. So deflation is the wind moving that layer completely away. So the underlying rocks are gonna be what's left behind and they're gonna create a landscape known as desert pavement. Basically, it's just what the picture looks like right here, rocks. So desert pavement's mostly um, small pebbles and small broken up rocks. If you notice, most of these tend to be about the same size, this one being the outlier because it is much larger. In deserts, we have what's known as dunes. And dunes are like right here and in this picture down here as well. Um, you've also probably seen them at the beach. So wind slows when it hits an obstacle. So those dunes are gonna help create ways for that wind to not be able to move and blow everything across just a flat plane. So when it creates and hits an obstacle, it's gonna drop the material that it's carrying, which is going to allow that dune to be created even bigger. So if the wind is blowing here, it's gonna hit the side of the dune and it's gonna drop or go through deposition. Basically, when wind drops and drops and drops over time, it's gonna build up and form a mound and that mound is thus this dune. The dune gently slopes um, on one side. Um, basically, it's gonna slope on both sides, but one side's gonna be facing the wind, and that's gonna be the side that continues to build up because the wind's constantly blowing the material up that side. Laos is something else we have. Um, sometimes people refer to it as loess. Um, it's extremely fine material that's carried over long periods of distance um, by the wind. It feels almost like talcum powder, which is like very fine, like baby powder and deposits are often found far from the original source, meaning it might have started in California and it could end up all the way across the other side of the United States. It is very valuable and it does make for good soil for growing crops. So lots of farmers are looking for this in their soil and they want it to be able to have a rich crop. Erosion by ice. So flowing ice, something we don't really have here, is often found in extreme north and extreme south parts of the globe near the poles. Um, and they are often found in the forms of glaciers. While you may not think a glacier is moving, it actually moves all the time. So glaciers are found on land where temperature is gonna be frozen year round, meaning it's under 32 degrees all the time. And basically what's happening is gravity is pulling that ice down the hill. Normally, glaciers appear to be sloped. The steeper that slope, the faster that gravity is gonna pull it. Just like anything else, if you are sledding down a hill or riding a bike down a hill, the steeper the slope, the quicker you're gonna move. Glaciers traveling downhill are gonna cut through and create grooves like you see here on the sides into the rock. And basically it causes abrasion on the rock and the soil underneath. So basically the glacier is actually cutting down the sides of the rock. As that glacier melts over time, it will drop the carried material, which is known as a glacial drift. So whatever it breaks off, it then drops and that material that gets dropped is the drift. So there are two main types of glaciers we're going to talk about. The first one is alpine, the second one is continental. And an alpine glacier is a glacier that forms in a mountainous area. Um, basically what happens when they flow through the valley, which is V-shaped, it's going to scrape that valley floor. And when it does, it's going to scrape from the floor all the way up the walls. And over time, it's going to basically wear away that V-shape and define it into a much more U-shaped or even almost like a bowl. 
So when it carves out that bowl-shaped depression, it gets called a cirque at the head of the valley. And it basically, alpine glaciers are going to create very sharp and very rugged landforms. Continental glaciers are thick sheets of ice that spread over large areas, kind of like a continent. It's just very large in size. They flatten in smooth landscapes, and these glaciers smooth and round exposed rock that are on surfaces around them in a very similar way to that that a bulldozer can do on soil. So a bulldozer just flattens the land. A continental glacier is going to flatten the um, land exposed in the form of ice. The last one is erosion by gravity. Now, there are two main types of erosion by gravity, slow mass movement and rapid mass movement. Slow mass movement often comes in the form of a creep. So if you look at this picture, basically what's happening in a creep is rocks in the soil are going to move down the hill because of gravity. We know that things are pulled down. But what happens is several factors lead to this. We know water loosens soil over time. We know that it allows it to move. We know that plants root for soil products. We know they burrow. We know they dig. Um, they plant nuts and they go back and pick them up. Burrowing animals loosen rocks. And we also know that plants are going to um, have their roots be able to be moved. So if you notice, this is what the picture would be. Everything moves down the hill. This is in real time. Anytime you see a J-shaped tree, this is a good indication that a creep is occurring. Also, when you see a fence that looks like it's sitting sideways and serving absolutely no purpose, at one point it would have been completely perpendicular up and down sitting directly into the ground. So both of those are slow mass movement and it does take a long time for this to occur. Now, rapid mass movement is just like its name says. It's rapid. It's quick. So the first one is a rock fall right here. These are all rocks. And basically what happens for any reason, um, loose rocks fall down the steep slope meaning you have rocks on the side of a hill. Maybe a bird or a squirrel moves that one little rock, that rock moves, and then it just knocks all the other rocks. And just like dominoes, it all goes down. A landslide is a sudden movement of a large amount of material downhill. That material does not have to be rocks. If it's just rocks, it's a rock fall. If it's just land, such as dirt, such as trees, such as soil, it's going to be a landslide as seen in picture two right here. Um, it can carry with it anything that's in its path. So it can take down trees, it can take down animals, plants, vehicles, and buildings. Anything that gets in the way of a, a landslide suddenly is gone. This is often um, something that happens out on the West Coast when they have incredible amounts of rain. Um, some of those fancy mansions that are in Malibu, California often fall off the cliffs because of landslides. A lot of times this happens and chances are increased of landslides occurring because of deforestation, removal of trees. Construction on steep slopes, meaning you build your house or your um, building on the side of a hill. Or earthquakes, which is often what triggers the ones in California. Earthquakes mixed with loose soil triggers disaster. And the last type of rapid mass movement is a mud flow. Now, mud flow is basically what its name says. It's flowing mud. So large amounts of water are going to mix with soil and rock, and the slippery mud will then flow down the hill. Often completely destroyed. Because of deforestation, um, when you take away trees, you take away things that are going to help secure the soil. And when that happens, you have that mud base and it just flows. Um, something that's very specific to a mud flow is when you have a mud flow from volcanic origin, meaning it mixes with the ash and the debris in the top of the volcano and then it flows down the sides. And these specific types of mud flows are called lahars and they can travel very quickly at over 80 kilometers per hour. All right. That's all. Thanks, guys.